Hi there and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Today I'm back in the Franchise Zoo after spending a couple of weeks on just doing Arid Pack release stuff. So it's nice to be back. To be fair, this episode is also a little bit Arid Pack heavy because we're playing catch up in the Every Animal Zoo. The rule with the zoo is that we're adding the animals alphabetically as they come up in the Animal Zoopedia. Well, since the Arid Pack launch a few weeks ago, that adds eight more animals to our zoo. And there's seven of those come up already alphabetically for this zoo. So yeah, today's episode is very much playing catch up and adding all of those arid animals that would have come up already if they'd already been in the game. So to start us off, we've got the Adux here and the Adux gets interspecies enrichment with four other animals, three of which we've not placed in the zoo because they are also in the new pack. So, I say we just build an enclosure that houses all four of those new animals. Makes my life easy. In terms of where I'm putting habitats this week, so the zoo is getting rather full now, and considering we're getting closer to the end than we are to the beginning, it's time for me to start considering a little more carefully where stuff's gonna go. So when I started this zoo, I had an idea that we were gonna have a diagonal path going from the entrance on opposite directions. We've done well and we've filled one side of that. So I think it's time we do need to start looking at filling the other side once we've finished off building at the top of the initial side. Now, this empty gap up here, before the Arid Pack release, I was saving this to put the remaining Oceania animals around here. I'd managed to get most of them up in this corner and I'd gravitated towards a dry, hot climate kind of theming up here too. So that was luck rather than good planning on my part. We've got the cassowary and the wallabies here. And right next door to that, we've got the uh, common wombat, that's it. <laughs> I always forget the name of the wombat. So anyway, I was saving this space for more of similar animals from the same region, but the arid pack animals that we're putting in today, they also come from, well, dry climate, don't they, being arid animals? And they do need quite a bit of space. So I think that idea of saving this for the Oceania animals has gone out the window and I'm going to use this space for the new arid animals and fingers crossed there's enough room to get all the ones in that I need to put in today. I'm starting off with a combined habitat for the Adax, the Dharma Gazelle, Dromedary Camel and the Somali Wild Ass. This is going to be quite a big enclosure to accommodate them all and I did want to keep in with that theme that I'd already started with the Oceania animals up here so that means using a lot of light wood, a lot of light plaster. As it happens, I've literally just created seven brand new habitats for the Arid Pack animals for the starter habitat series that I do, mostly using this exact theme. So call me lazy or just taking inspiration from something I've already done, but I am reusing a lot of the pieces that I've just created for that. For this combined habitat, the largest animals in this group is the Dromedary Camel, and I just created a nice little stable for the camel. So that saved me quite a bit of time using the blueprint for that, albeit I have made some adjustments for that one for the starter habitat series. There's no roof pieces in the base game that work for this kind of theme, so for that one I did have to create a custom roof and it's kind of heavy on the piece count for that, so I've been able to take that out for this zoo and put in a normal roof and just recolor it. Sorry, I do also have to mention, <clears throat> sorry, getting away from the animal talk here. Right, so it is really hot right now where I live and we're going through this crazy sort of heat wave at the moment where it is oppressively hot every day. Trying to record in 30 degree heat is not great for me. It's certainly not great for my PC. It does overheat. So instead, I've got up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm recording this at the break of dawn. 
when it's the coolest time of day. The only problem with this, I've still got the window open because it's still about 25 degrees in here and there's some very noisy territorial magpies outside. So apologies if you can hear that over the recording, but they're having a bit of an, um, they're having a bit of an argument outside that I can hear. <laughs> All the birds get a bit riled up in the morning, screaming at each other for some reason. But yeah, I really don't fancy recording in here with the window closed. So apologies if you can hear some noise like that also if my voice audio is a little bit quieter than i normally am apologies i am trying to keep my voice down a little bit so i'm not waking people up at five o'clock in the morning in the household anyway enough of me complaining about the weather back to the build like i say i've used a lot of pre-built assets for this build and it's only because they work really well with this kind of animal. Having four types of animals in this enclosure, I have had to make some accommodations for them all. For example, the Adax and the Dharma Gazelle, they're both shy animals. So that's why we've got the one-way screen in the guest fence there. It's a shame really, because the Somali wild ass and the dromedary camel are both confident creatures. So when I get confident creatures, it is nice to put in a nice low fence there. Gives the guests a really great view, but because of the shy animals in the same enclosure, I have to accommodate for those too. I tend to deal with those kind of things by putting in the one-way glass, which is fine when it's in a building, but when you point it into an external fence, it looks a bit weird, mainly from the inside of the enclosure because it just looks all black around the outside. It does frustrate me a little bit because I feel like in a real life zoo, I mean, many zoos obviously have antelope and gazelles in their zoos. And what I've seen how they deal with animals getting intimidated by the guests, they just have a big moat or some kind of walling system that keeps the animals away from getting directly up close with the guests. That's not going to fly in Planet Zoo because the guests will then complain that they can't see the animals. If it was a sandbox zoo, then it would be no problem. I would just turn off the animal intimidation. But as we all know, the whole purpose of this challenge is to see if we can manage all of this in a franchise zoo. So indeed, it is a challenge and I just have to live with the one-way glass. Anyway, we're coming to completion of this combined habitat, so let's take a look around. So four of the new arid pack animals in this enclosure. It is quite a big enclosure to accommodate them all. This habitat does benefit from being on a corner plot on the road, so plenty of barrier there where the guests can see in. Adjusted one of my stable blueprints here, so we've got a window that looks into the stables itself. And in here, yeah, it is a blueprint that I've already created, but I do love this design and there's plenty of room here for all the animals to get some quiet time and a bit of a sleep in there. So the environment inside this habitat, well, it's mostly sand. We've got a bit of rock up at the back that accommodates for the wild ass there. They like a bit of rock apparently. But being mostly sand, I've kept this quite level across the habitat. So there's no steep inclines or anything like that in this one. It does feel quite busy in here with the four different kind of species. Good thing all, aside from the Dharma, can survive in their social group with just two of them. The Dharma needed three. At least no crazy six or eight animals needed for a social group in this mix. Another great feature on this one is most of them are able to share the enrichment in here and the food containers. They're all grazers and they all like the same kind of toys for the enrichment so it's not littered with those across the habitat. Guests seem pretty happy with the view so far so I'm gonna say this is a success at the moment. That's four more animals in in one go which is always a good thing. So time for the next habitat I think. And what do we have next? For this, we're back in the A's again, and this time we have the African Crested Porcupine to put in. Porcupines can have up to six in their enclosure, but we only need two to meet the social group. They really don't need a lot of space at all. They are fantastic in the fact that they don't take up an awful lot of room. No interspecies bonus, unfortunately, but considering how little room they take up, I don't see that being a problem. In terms of where I'm putting them, there's a big space here, but saving that for something else, you can probably guess what. The small strip of land above this, this is gonna be perfect for the porcupines because they don't need 
it's all that much space. I have also got more exhibit animals coming in soon. So I think I'm gonna create a little bit of an exhibit space up here as well. So the porcupines are gonna take up all of this room. I'm confident I can get them in this small strip here. Okay, so build for the porcupines is probably the quickest and most efficient build I've ever put into the Every Animal Zoo. Like I've mentioned, I literally just created seven habitats for the starter habitat series. And even though those habitats are geared at starter players, so they're very base game stuff and there's no fanciness to them at all. Sometimes I will come up with an idea for those that just seems to work no matter where I put it. And that's certainly the case for the porcupine here. The porcupine is really one of the best species to build for in Planet Zoo. They need barely any room. They're not quite that fussy with the plantings in there and they're confident creatures. So you don't have to worry about hiding the animals from the guests at all. This is definitely my favorite kind of habitat to make. So when I was building this one for the starter habitat series, I really did go all out on that one and I've been able to use most of those elements in this build too. Very little fiddling needed which is always good in my book. Something I was conscious of while I was building this enclosure but I still wasn't tempted to try it. The African crested porcupines are okay with walkthrough enclosures. Now I am pretty keen to build a walkthrough enclosure for the porcupines and that might be something that I do as a separate project. For the Every Animal Zoo, unfortunately I am not prepared to go back and do any walkthrough enclosures anymore because of the absolute mess that happened with the lemur enclosure. I love the idea of walkthrough enclosures, but the game is just a bit pants when it comes to handling walkthrough enclosures. The amount of stuff I was dealing with when I made the lemur one, it was ridiculous. The game has some sort of game mechanic where it encourages people, I guess, to go to a walkthrough enclosure because the amount of guests that were going through there was ridiculous. They had no respect for the animals, so there was litter being dropped in there, which obviously the animals didn't like. And a few people did suggest maybe I should put a bin in there, but then you have the issue that the animals now will go through the bins. So you can't win, really. I also wish there was a way to limit the amount of guests that are going through a walkthrough enclosure at one point, because that would happen in real life. I've been to many zoos in my time and all of them that have the walkthrough enclosures, they have a double gate. They mostly always have someone posted at that gate and they prevent more than say six or seven people going through at any one time. So yeah, personally, I think it would be great if Planet Zoo gave you the option to limit the amount of people going through the walkthrough enclosure at any one point. That could at least go some ways to limiting the animal stress. Still, yeah, definitely want to do a walkthrough porcupine enclosure at some point, but just not for the every animal zoo. Anyway, we're getting close with this one, so let's have a look. So this is my African crested porcupine enclosure. One of my favorite in this zoo, one of the easiest to make. Quite a small footprint, and I've actually made this bigger than the porcupines even need, just to fill that space up in the corner. And we've already got some guests taking a look. I love how close they can get to the porcupines because they're a confident species. Absolutely adorable as well, aren't they? But yeah, it's great how close they can get to guests and not feel any stress from that. <laughs> Just look at that reaction. Oh, geez. This is the best day ever. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, they are super cute and the fact that you can get up so close, that's such a bonus. Let's see if they're gonna have a play with the water jet. Yeah, so enrichment wise, there's an awful lot of enrichment items in here. The porcupines do need a lot of entertaining. I've put these all outside to encourage the porcupines out here. We do have this lovely hard shelter for them to sleep in though. Kind of a game changer for me figuring out that you can use the walkthrough exhibit netting as a window. So a lovely little shade there. There's also a foraging feeding station for them in here. Made sure that they had access to this. Then I've got this little shaded area at the back. They don't need this strictly, but I just like it. So it makes a nice side piece there to put an end to the habitat there. About the only thing you'll notice missing from this habitat, I don't have an underground burrow in here. That again is an issue with having a franchise zoo. I don't have the underground burrows because I know the guests are gonna complain when they can't see the animals. 
It is a shame I have to think of those mechanics being a franchise zoo, but we still have to make a profit here, otherwise the whole endeavour will eventually fail. Hey ho, overall I'm very happy with this enclosure, one of the easiest I've ever made. Next up we've got an animal that isn't quite as accommodating, it's another avid pack animal and if you guessed correctly it's the black rhino. The rhinos only need two of these in the enclosure but they need an awful lot of room for just two of them and they don't get any interspecies enrichment with any other animals so they're all on their lonesome unfortunately. Space wise I'm sure you already guessed correctly but this is what I've been saving this big space for here. I'm really hoping this is going to be big enough to put the rhinos in. They may struggle space wise and have to squeeze in here a little bit. So the black rhino build this is an interesting one. It genuinely surprises me that the black rhino can't share the habitat space with any other animal. Considering both the other rhinos we already have in the game, they can. So it's just a bit weird that the black rhino, they would be like, no, you can't have anything else in there, but the other two are fine. The black rhino is about middle of the range for size wise. So the southern white rhino needs more room. The Indian rhino needs less. But yeah, because they're all on their own in here, they are taking up a lot of room. As far as theming goes for this habitat, so I am breaking away a little bit from the bleached wood effect on this one. Black rhinos live in South Central Africa, so I've gone with a more deep earthy tone for this habitat. I have used some elements on this build from my starter series, the, the habitat that I just created for that, but a lot of this is bespoke as well because there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to do with that habitat, but because it was piece limited on that one, I wasn't able to. Now that I'm not limited by the base game restrictions, I've been able to incorporate a lot more rock work into this build. Now, might be a bit controversial to say, I'm gonna talk about DLC packs now. So my opinion, it's definitely okay for Planet Zoo to release DLC packs. They're never very expensive and they are a, like a bonus feature rather than being a core element of the game. The base game is very thorough, it's a full game in its own right and the gameplay from the base game, even if you owned none of the packs, it definitely doesn't suffer, apart from in one tiny area. My somewhat controversial opinion for today is that I think the faux rocks should be part of the base game, not in a DLC. If like me, you're a creative player and you get more joy out of creating habitats than actually playing the game, the faux rocks are an essential element of pretty much most of the habitats I create. And I can imagine a lot of other players feel like that about them too. This is literally the only thing I would say would be missing from the base game is that you don't get the faux rock collection with the base game. You have to buy the aquatic DLC for that. It's, yeah, it's a little ironic considering these are fake rocks, but they add so much realism to a build when you use them. I do find it quite frustrating whenever I'm building with just exclusively base game pieces, I can't use the fake rocks. So indeed, I am building this black rhino habitat using some of the elements of the build that I used for my starter habitat series one, but I knew I definitely wanted to add some of the fake rocks. And there's also some other DLC pieces in this build too. So yeah, anyway, I'll stop complaining about DLC issues now. You probably know by now, after so many episodes, I'm really not a complainer. I mostly have nothing but praises to sing about Planet Zoo and the concept of the game and all that. It just really bugs me and I find it a little bit unfair that the faux rocks are behind a paywall. Right, back to talking about the rhinos. So the rhinos themselves, they don't like a lot of foliage in their enclosure. This becomes a problem when you've got a big animal that needs a lot of space and there's not really much going on in their enclosure. There's a lot of empty space. So what do you do in that situation? For me, I try to bring the enclosure alive a little bit by creating different levels. I use foundation walls that I use to hold back the dirt of an upper level. This is something you'll get in real life. Obviously all that dirt, it's gonna fall down with gravity if you don't have something retaining it up. So that's where these faux rock walls come into play. We do have some nice cobblestone walls already in the game with some of the DLC packs and I did use the 
rustic stone wall that i think we got that in the europe pack dlc i did use that on the barrier wall that i created for this enclosure but i do like creating my own walls as well out of the faux rocks and the plaster pieces it just makes it a little more unique the repetition of the stones in the rustic wall it's okay for small elements of a build but it can get a bit repetitive and looks a bit odd when you're using that for long stretches of wall so yeah i've got my own custom wall in here and also using those faux rocks to really bring this landscape to life since the rhinos are so fussy about the foliage probably about time to take a look at the final build this is the completed black rhino habitat build and yes it is very big it just about meets their space requirements so even with there only being two rhinos in here they do need a lot of space I can't really complain it's a rhino I'm sure it probably is quite accurate to real life guests so far are happy with the view we've got plenty of viewing areas here although maybe not the best idea to put a bench right there it's rather in the way isn't it ignoring that we've got the big long open retaining wall here and there should be plenty of room for the guests to be able to view the rhinos doing their rhino stuff outside here this continues along the side this habitat actually is joined to the other arid pack animal habitat by this fence here probably not realistic to have such a flimsy fence for a rhino there but hey ho I've made a bit of a feature out of the mud bath enrichment here, got this encased in some of the faux rocks. I've checked and this is accessible to them, the rhinos just don't use the mud bath very often, which is a shame. But when they do, any guests at the barrier will get a lovely view of that. Right, what else do I have to show? So yeah, even though there's not much foliage in this enclosure, the rock work makes it look like there's more than there is really helps break up the space when you've got animals that refuse to have any plants in their enclosure hey up something a bit weird going on here you know i have noticed since the last update of the game the animals will collide with each other a lot more than they used to it feels certainly feels like i'm getting more weird situations like this where they're kind of melded into each other happening I'm sure that'll be fixed at some point so over in the corner of this habitat i've got an area here that i've made a feature out of this bit and it's got more open windows here so it's more viewable for children and short people i guess being five foot three i probably appreciate something like this in a real zoo there is some enrichment items over this side to entice the rhinos over hopefully the guests get a better view when they're over here unlike this <laughs> Uh, taking photos of the blooming wall there's a window right there honestly you can't win anyway for completeness shall we take a look at the hard shelter this really isn't anything special it's just a large plaster building i have created a custom roof out of the i think it's the climbing platform because i didn't like any of the prefab roofs that come with the game i was going for this earthy rustic wooden feel and they were all too polished for that so the climbing platform does the job well there is some nice big viewing windows back here so you can have a look at the rhinos whilst they're sleeping and this backs on quite nicely to our little porcupine habitat there still in love with those little porcupines they're so great but yeah i'd say that's pretty much it for the rhino habitat there it does back onto the staff buildings so might cause an issue with guests but i like it for the easy access there oh yeah and something else i've built that we've not looked at that exhibition space i was talking about i've gone ahead and put that in we have a few exhibit animals coming up soon so there is a few empty boxes here but the one in so far the desert horn viper has come up from the arid pack so let's see if we can find the viper there we go not difficult to see this one problem i've had with this there's um very few vipers available in the exhibit trade market right now it literally took me hours to find this one so i'm having to keep searching so that this lady here she can have a mate at some point i could only find one and it was a female so waiting for a male to come through but for now that is already seven of the eight arid pack animals in the zoo because of where they fall in the zoopedia and sharing the 
space through interspecies. Sanka is the one left out and that's going to be a while yet before we get to that one in the Zoopedia so hang tight for then. I hope you like the habitats we have got in today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.